Hey, so glad that you have all had a chance to meet someone new. Let's hear it again for uh, Workman Neid uh, Neidegger for providing lunch. And, and we're super grateful, again, to San Diablo Churros for providing churros. <laughs> Woohoo! Those are not just any churro. If you didn't get one, you need to make sure you do. Those are amazing. We're also um, pleased to hear today from Scott Porter. Uh, this is our featured founder series. This is where we have a chance to interview a successful entrepreneur. And uh, that interview will take place by our very own Rebecca Palmer, who is over PR and communications here at RevRoad. She helps our companies get great placement in all kinds of different uh, publications. Uh, one of our companies that we uh, launched at CES this year, she, she uh, made sure that we got uh, media spots in over 90 different publications and, uh, and shows. It was really great placement, super excited about that. Um, and she helps a lot of our companies with the, uh, those types of things. So she'll be conducting the interview today, and Scott Porter will be the one who will be our featured founder. We'd like to welcome them to the stage, so give them a round of applause. Hey, thank you, Scott. Let's have a seat. Thank you. Great to be here. Oh, thank you. So let me tell you guys all a little bit about Scott. He's had a very eclectic career path. He's, his first business actually was a neighborhood newspaper, which he produced on a typewriter under his parents' stairs, I believe. <laughs> I, lo I love newspapers. That's great. Um, he's also founded a nursing home in Southern California started a home health agency, created a toy and game company, and founded an international airline. In 2016, he founded San Diablo Artisan Churros, and he's been serving up deep fried happiness ever since. Yeah. Now, Scott also works as an executive facilitator and executive advisor for a handful of companies, and is co-director and founder of Singular Humanitarian Experience. So. Scott, welcome to the stage. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. So what, what brought you to Utah? Uh, when I, um, I was, after Surf Air, we launched the first all-you-can-fly membership airline in, uh -huh, in okay. Santa Monica. And, um, and after that ended, my time there ended, I was kind of toggling back and forth working on a couple of tech startups between Utah and, and, um, and Los Angeles. Okay. And both of those failed uh, and did not uh, work out. And so I was here, had already sublet my contract in, in Los Angeles. And so I thought, well, I might as well start another business. And I, so churros was one of those things that had been in the back of my head for a long time. And I'd never done anything in food before. So I thought, why uh -huh. not? Um, I remember having my first filled churro in Mexico City years ago. And like most of us, when we travel, you find something or eat something, and you're like, why can't we have this back, at, back home, back in America? And so uh, that's exactly what happened to me. Um, and I just thought it would be irresponsible not to share something so delicious <laughs> you know, with, with the world. So uh, that was the birth of San Diablo. Um, there's some other elements to it, but that, that and that, that's, I, that happened about two years ago was when I decided to, to be here in Utah. So coming back, I was at yeah. BYU twice. Um, I did my undergrad and then MBA program at BYU as well. Oh, cool. Well, I think everybody here can attest to the fact we're happy that you found at San Diablo in Utah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you from all of us. Well, thank you. And thank you, Utah, for loving sugar as much as you do. So, yeah. We do. We love sugar. Yep. Um, so... I understand you've traveled a lot. I love to travel, yeah. <laughs> There's something magical that happens when you get out of your comfort zone and get mm -hmm. out of your norm. Um, opens up your perspectives. Ever, you know, we all know this. This is what travel does. This is why we do it. It's, it's amazing. So yeah, I love to travel. So that's fantastic. I'm I have a goal to be <laughs> to a new country every year for the rest of my life. I'm a little bit behind. Starting a business has kind of made that happen, but, um, mm -hmm. but I've, been, uh, I've been to a bunch of different places all over. So. And, and I understand you hunt taco carts. I am on the search <laughs> for the perfect taco. Yes, this is what I do. Oh, that's great. Um, yeah, I've been on this search. Anyone else on this search with me? Yeah? There we go. <laughs> um, yeah, I am a taco fiend. 
I love them. I've been searching for tacos. I've probably had tens of thousands of tacos in my, in my adult life. And, um, and I've led taco tours to Mexico City for years, had taken wow. like executives and friends and family. Um, uh, it's one of my favorite things to do in Mexico City. And so I, as I've, in my passion for the taco, I want to die with like my last meal. You know, sometimes they ask you that. Uh, they're like, what would you like to be? After? I, I, I mean, if you're a I'll, convict. Oh, oh yeah. It, well, okay. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> sorry. Well, yeah, Back no, on track. No, no, no. Last it's meal. Total, yeah, my last meal, whether I'm a convict or not, um, hopefully not, um, uh, is tacos al pastor. Um, I want to, and I know exactly where I'd get it right now in Mexico City. Um, and so I'll probably have to die there, and that's fine. It doesn't matter. And... Um, <laughs> It's worth it. And uh, so, yeah, I just, I'm, I'm constantly looking for the perfect taco. In this search, I've realized that there's, there's like this master class, um, the true taco experience. Anyone been to Mexico City? Anyone, please. If you haven't, let's go. Everyone else, you all have to go at some <laughs> point in your life. It's not as dangerous as everyone says. It's a magical place. Um, and... Uh, so I'll take you there or give you recommendations. If you go, I'll send you all my, all my uh, taco haunts there. So um, there, what I've found in my taco experiences is that it's just this amazingly simple and delicious master class in elements, that, uh, elements of extraordinary customer and brand experience. And so throughout all of my search, I've realized and I've watched taco masters as they interact with people and they're like making the tacos right in front of you. It's a show. They're connecting with you as an individual. They're looking at you in the eye. This is their passion. They want to deliver something exactly perfect for you. And so as I've studied this and eaten a lot of tacos along the way, I've realized that there's no better classroom to kind of learn these and punctuate what really stands out in, in extraordinary customer and brand experience. And so that's, that there's, there's, aside from the culinary joy that you get from tacos, there's a lot of really interesting things you can, you can learn. Oh, that is so interesting. So we, we do pre-interviews, as you guys know. When we were talking earlier, you told me about a specific taco experience, I think, in L.A. Oh, yeah. So can you, will you share that with everybody? Yep. Um, any L.A. taco lovers, L.A.? Oh, my goodness. You guys, we got to go to L.A., too. Let's, this <laughs> is like, we got a long list of things we need to do together. So um, one of my favorite taco places in East L.A. is right um, where the 60 and the 10 and the 5 freeways meet. It's like this spaghetti bowl. There's an obscure car wash on top. And there's police sirens going on. It's East LA. It's just awesome, gritty. And and I hadn't been there in six months, and uh, which in and of itself is a tragedy. Uh, so we'll start there. And um, I walk up to the food truck for from El Pecas, and I walk up to the window of El Pecas, and Alberto greets me. Scott, where you've been for the past six months? Um, wow. Can I, can I get you your tacos the way you always like them? The al pastor with the extra crispy meat and extra pineapple on top? I'm like, I seriously thought I was being punked. I like turned around. I couldn't believe this. How yeah. does this happen? Um, imagine if all of us as leaders, as CEOs, leaders, influencers, in whatever sphere of influence we have, if if all of our people, ourselves included, were just like Alberto. We remembered people's names. We remembered what they liked. We remembered what they ordered. We could, uh, we could, um, uh, we genuinely, and this is what I love, he genuinely got, got satisfaction and fulfillment from having, providing something for me that I loved. Wow. Because guess what? He, well, first, first of all, it's a, it's a little bit more difficult, right? Put the meat on the grill longer. They got to get the pineapple mm -hmm. out. A little bit more difficult. And not only that, he's not the owner. And so oh, wow. it's really made me think, examples like Alberto's is, have really made me think, um, what can we do as leaders, as CEOs, as influencers to create something that's so special that we, and, and so um, personal that it's making a lasting difference. I have literally, I've shared this online, I've told this to thousands of people, 
And, um, and it's, it's such a, a tremendous example. Imagine if all of us were like Alberto, you know? Wow. So that's, yeah. what, that's what I want to share. I want to share those types of experiences so that we can all craft something that's exceptional and really gets to what the previous speaker was talking about, traction. I believe he said, I took some notes, he said, traction demonstrates loyalty, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Traction demonstrates loyalty. How do we get loyalty? How do you build traction? Imagine if Alberto's principles you enacted in everything you do as a business or an organization. That is one of the, that is exactly one of the ways that you can build that loyalty because I'm like loyal, I can't wait to go back to, L, to East LA when the next time I'm there and, and hit up Alpecas again. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So with all the different businesses that you've created, has this been kind of a common theme, would you say? Absolutely. This is yeah. a common thread. So yeah, totally random. You'd look at my resume, I'm like, nursing homes, toys and games, right, airlines, yeah. and now churros. <laughs> No, no, no per perceived connection to all of right. those things. Um, the common thread among all of them is this absolute obsession and passion for crafting this extraordinary customer and brand experience. Um, in all, a lot of the similarities with many of those industries are a lot of them uh, have terrible reputations. Right, and nursing homes. Nursing homes. Yeah, I'm thinking we had it. We had a, last time we had a story about Southwest Airlines, I think. Okay. Southwest breaks guitars. United. United, yeah. Oh. So definitely some big challenges in yeah. those industries. Yeah, Doctor Doubt. Yeah. Was that what you yeah. were talking about? Or wait, which I one? think so. Was that Tegan? Is that right, Doctor Doubt? Where he got reaccommodated? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think what what's happened, whether it's United Airlines, nursing homes, you know, uh, f the food business is that we are so accustomed to uh, a mediocre or terrible customer experience yeah. that when someone does something exceptional um, or even just extra positive, we're like blown away. And, and we're like telling everyone, just two days ago, Alec at Trader Joe's in Salt Lake. I was going down the aisle. Um, any Trader Joe's fans, you guys are happy because it's right, it's mm -hmm. right, it's coming. Mm -hmm. They're coming here to Orem. Is it open? It's open. It's open. Yay. Cowbell for Trader Joe's. Um, there we go. <laughs> Cue the cowbell. Um, and so uh, Alec, I was in the line, and I was looking at this new uh, coconut sesame seed sweet mixture thing. I was like, this looks really interesting. Never had it before. He's like, he saw me shuffling through it and kind of studying it. He says, hey, do you want to try that? I mean, have you had that before? And I said, no, I haven't. He's like, well, just open it up and try it. I'm like, okay. <laughs> and so I open it up and I try it. And I'm like, that's really good. That would be awesome on my Greek yogurt every morning. He's like, yeah, it's great. He's like, yeah, just, here, give me this bag and grab a new one and then you'll be good to go. And so I grabbed two. Wow. Um, as I'm walking out to go pay, his manager comes up and passes by Alec and I overhear this. And he's like, hey, Alec, um, so there's one of our customers, it, her tire's flat. Could you go and change her, help her change her tire? He's like, oh yeah, absolutely. Wow. <laughs> wow. Who's this guy, right? And so I'm like, I'm like, oh yeah. So I'm that guy. I'm such a nerd when it comes, I'm taking pictures of customer experience all the time. So I check out and I follow him out to the parking lot <laughs> and he's already changing his tire, uh, her tire rather. And, um, and I come up to him, I'm like, Alec, like, what is going on? You're amazing. I told the supervisor as I was leaving, I'm like, this guy's gold. You gotta, whatever you do to keep him around. And so I go out and I talk to Alec and I said, what is this all about? This is Can I share this story? And he's like, sure. It's like, it's just what we do. Yeah. And I'm like, wow. yes it is. Yes it is. And that's why trade, that's why you got that rousing, response of who's a, found of a fan of Trader Joe's, because it's what they do. They have infused principles of exceptional customer and brand experience into everything they do at every level, and every person is empowered to deliver on that. And 
amazing. I shared it. It's like the, the, I got the most likes on that post since I hiked Kilimanjaro four years ago. So <laughs> it was like in 24 hours, it was like well over 300 likes. And for me, that's a, that's a big deal. I mean, maybe you guys are a lot more, more than that, but, um, <laughs> but I, that's because it resonates with people. You talk about traction and loyalty, it resonates and people feel, they're like, they care. Trader Joe's cares about me because they care about this lady that it's not in his job. I bet, I mean, I don't know, but I bet in his job description doesn't say, can you change a flat tire? Maybe it does. I wouldn't put it past Trader Joe's actually, but <laughs> um, I doubt it. But that's what we're talking about here. The power and potential of exceptional customers customer and brand experience. So with, you know, with a business that has a lot of human contact, nursing home, churros, Trader Joe's, yep. kind of makes a lot of sense, I think. Um, but we have a lot of startup founders here who sell maybe software or business to business, business to government. Yep. Is customer experience Im important there also? Yeah. Like well, great question. And I'm sure some of you are thinking about that. You're like, yeah, well, that's churros and groceries and and human contact things. So let's see if we can get this to work. Oh, which by the way, you're all invited oh. to our launch party. I skipped over this slide, but you're all invited to our launch party tonight. Free churros and ice cream yeah. um, in Draper. We'll have all sorts of surprises and prizes. And this is my obsession of search for the perfect taco. <laughs> now, this slide right here. So I went to X4. Uh, Qualtrics X4 conference a couple of months ago, Ryan Smith in his keynote shared this statistic. 80% of CEOs and leaders believe they are creating a positive customer experience. In reality, only 8% of their customers agree. That's so you tell difference. me what, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's like 10 times right? overconfidence. Yeah, right? <laughs> Does that sound like CEOs? Well, mm. could, yeah, right? So guilty as charged, anyone? Do you fit into this category? I don't know. That's what you need to be introspective, have the humility to look into, into your, your, what you're creating, what you're developing. Um, think about this gap. Do you have this much of a gap? Maybe your gap's smaller, but it, regardless, there's still a gap. So it doesn't matter whether you're running a multi-million dollar software company or a churro business. Um, we all ultimately are humans interacting with humans. Seth Godin calls this the new relationship economy that we live in. And the businesses that get this right, that realize that we are humans interacting with humans and humans are making decisions based on feelings, um, your, your, every, every touch point that your brand has with your customers is an opportunity to, people are developing feelings about your brand based on every single one of those touch points, all of the five senses. Um, every time they pick up the phone, every email they get, they can hear a smile in an email, or they can see a smile in an email. You can hear a smile over the phone. Um, all of those things are super important. If you create that much more of a positive customer and brand experience, you're going to create traction. You're gonna create loyalty. I'm gonna share a slide in a second that talks about this. Steve Jobs um, uh, has also said that um, uh, you have to start with the customer experience in mind and work back toward the technology. And well, not and the other way around. Th I mean, that leads to a question I had. I mean, entrepreneurs are so, so busy. Yeah. You know, they have all kinds, they have to, you know, raise capital for, you know, like we talked about earlier, or deal with contracts or, or all <laughs> No, no, no. Of so, course, like, like, so how really? does a, finder, a founder find time to do this? Like, can you hire this out? How do you make it happen? Oh, man, I love this question. <laughs> I'm just like chomping at the bit of this question. <laughs> Leading into this, I want to share something that maybe okay. will give you a little bit of motivation to do this. All right. So these are based on, you can see the attribution at the bottom there. So Harvard Business Review, um, I believe we've got McKinsey and Rosetta and Sean Aker. Companies that create positive customer experience or positive, positive CX um, can expect 140% more spend from their customers 
an increase in revenue of 15%, decreased cost, increased loyalty, increased happiness. Um, so you plug your numbers into these figures and you tell me if it's worth it. Um, now, this is, uh, so worth it to spend the time and money. I, an, another thing I think oftentimes is, uh, is a misnomer is that this is like an extra burden. I met with, uh, a, couple, I met with a couple of CEOs recently and they're, they're like, you know what? This is really great. I believe in this. I think we need to craft a better and improved, amazing customer experience. But I just can't burden my team with, with anything else to do right now. And I feel that. I'm an entrepreneur myself. I have no time. I don't know where we come up with the time we do. You guys know this. You're in the thick of it right now. Um, there is no better time to do this than when you think it's the worst time. Hmm. And the reason being, if you, if you set up clear expectations, I remember in all of the instances when we focused, when I first started, uh, sorry, it just started three different sentences. <laughs> you're happens, good, right? you're good, you're excited. So um, when you... Um, the more clearly you can define your mission and your values and the, the expectations on your customer and brand experience, the more you liberate your entire team. You liberate them and you give them the permission to innovate. So Colin right here, if you have interacted with him, he's textbook amazing. I love this guy. He's um, cowbell for yourself, please. <laughs> So we just, got, um, we just got a review, unsolicited review, from a party that he catered recently. And there were so many explanation, ex, exclamation points in this review. Um, it was amazing. Um, I just shared it with our entire team because it's exemplary. He went in, and they're like, the churros were amazing. Yeah, that's great. But Colin was over the top. He was super friendly. He named a churro after our son because it was his birthday. It was the Ryland Delight. We have never, I mean, you correct me, Colin, but we have never in the job interview or any time said, when you go to a birthday party of an eight-year-old, make sure and name a churro after him, because he'll really like that. We've never done that. But what we have done is set up the expectation of wow, set up the expectation of over-delivering, of creating something special and unique and awesome for everyone that we interact with. And so, so your team will surprise you with their innovative ideas. They'll surprise you by naming a churro after, or naming a, a, a churro after one of your guests. That's what happens. So, so creating and spending some time breaking from what you're doing, I remember, and spending some time to, to craft that, and just, it doesn't have to be perfect, but just set it in motion, those guiding principles, and then let that, and then come back to that as your North Star as a company. When we were starting Surf Air, I mean, it was insane. It was like, we're at an incubator much like this, and, and we're trying to pitch and get millions of dollars so we could launch with airplanes and everything. And, and we, we took that time. We forced ourselves to say, okay, we need to figure out exactly what we're trying to do. Are we Singapore Airlines? Are we Southwest Airlines? Where do we fit in the experience that we're trying so that we, that will guide all of the rest of our decisions? Same thing is true with, like, in the nursing home. I, I, I uh, took over the second nursing home that I took over. It was, it was, it was a really bad situation. They had failed their, their state inspection, and um, we were going in with, uh, man, it was, uh, their nurses were screaming at each other at the stations, and we had uh, uh, abuse allegations, and the Department of Justice was in there, and all sorts of crazy madness was happening. Yeah. And my business partner, Elizabeth, and I were, were charged with turning this around and passing the next inspection, or all of those people would have to leave, we would have to divest of the property, et cetera. And so it was a Herculean task. We had an amazing team, but the first thing, one of the first things that I did when I got in there was set the right expectations. 
with all of the team. And that oftentimes meant that we were cleaning house of team members that weren't living up to those expectations, that we were spending a considerable amount of time bringing on new people that were going to help us meet those expectations of the experience that we were trying to create. Um, but I can tell you, I, I mean, we were able to pull ourselves out of that situation and, um, and then ultimately get back in the black and all because of these guiding principles of understanding what is expected of your team and, and then having them deliver on that because you can't be everywhere. Right. I can't be at every churro event. I would love to because that's the other thing is that as an entrepreneur, you, Gary V talks about you got to be the architect and the janitor. That's why I'm wearing an apron, you know? <laughs> I, I, I love, I love it. I love being on the ground in the, in the trenches with our team. Um, that's how you know what's really going on. And that's where a lot of the magic happens. So. Oh, that's, that's so exciting. I can't believe you were able to turn a whole nursing home around in that bad of shape with this principle. That's amazing. Now, I want to talk soon. Why do you think I'm bald? <laughs> it was, oh. Ooh. Man. Um, I want to get to... Oh, she's that, so, so sorry. <laughs> Um, so I want to I want to come back around to Taco in a second, Taco. but but first um, I really like something you said and I, I wrote it down here, um, so I ask it correctly. Now you said businesses are uniquely poised to change the world. So, mm. you know, before we move on to how to do it, can you kind of talk about that? Why do you believe that? So, um, look at yourself. Like literally, like look at yourself right now. How many brands are you interacting with in this very red hot second? How many brands? Can you name all of them? You may not even be able to name all of them, <laughs> but think about how many you have touching your physical body right mm -hmm. now. Okay. How many you used in the morning that are on you that you may not be thinking about? Um, uh, and then how many are we looking at right now? We are literally having thousands I, I mean, I got my party socks on. We're having our launch party tonight. These are from my buddy, Voltage uh, Ad Agency in Denver. Awesome. All of these, I love these socks. I think about him every time I put these on. And his agency. They helped us brand reverse charades. And they're amazing. We are constantly having brand interactions, thousands of them every day. Now imagine, like I feel... And these positive endorphins come to me when I put these socks on because I love this company. But there's so many of these that I have just mediocre to neutral feelings about. Now imagine if every one of these brands cared just 1% more, just one notch more about creating a positive brand experience for me as a customer, for all of us as customers. It would raise all of our levels of happiness, even just for a little moment. Imagine, like, let's say we have a great experience here at Rev Road or wherever you are today. We were a great experience, positive, awesome. We interacted, met new people. You guys are fantastic here. We leave and someone rear ends us coming out. We're going to react very differently than had we had a horrible experience here. Someone was really rude to us. Like, I fell and slipped and broke my ankle, whatever, whatever happened, we're like, you have a negative experience, we're going to react very differently than we would it, mm -hmm. after re someone rear ends us outside. The point being, um, I believe that businesses have an opportunity and even a responsibility to create positive customer and brand experiences and care just a little bit more about the human nature of the business transaction and make it an interaction. And, uh, and if, if businesses did that, we will rise, have this rising tide of happiness that goes all over the world because this is, this is me seeing you as a human, not as how much money can I squeeze out of you? you know? How much work can I get out of you? Um, I, if we change our mentality, at, from, I, if anyone has spent time in Nepal, it's such a beautiful, beautiful place. They live this mentality of namaste, which means the divine in me recognizes the divine in you. 
if all of us as business owners, business leaders, um, uh, family, you're, you're leading your own family, we're all leaders of our own personal brand, if we had that much more uh, focus, mindfulness, um, intention about crafting a, a positive customer experience, we could change the world. Yeah. I really truly believe that. And oh, that yeah. is why I am so passionate about this because I see the impact that it has. I've felt it in the, in the businesses that I've, that, I've, that I've worked with, that I've run. And, and I see it in examples like Alec from Trader Joe's just two days ago that punctuates this to me. This is the key to traction, key to success. Well, I, I love that. I, I love that so much. Everybody write that down. I remember it. <laughs> um, so we, we're kind of short on time. Do you, should we talk about taco? Let's talk. All let's right, let's do it. it. Let's do it. So this <laughs> taco is, let me make sure I get this right, this is kind of your methodology for how sure. a new founder would go about crafting a customer experience. Sure. So there are just four simple, simple things that I would suggest maybe that you could use these to evaluate where you're at with your customer and brand experience and, right. and give you some, uh, some pointers there. So the first, so T-A-C-O. And I use a little bit of liberty here because I know you're not supposed to use uh, uh, articles in an acronym, but <laughs> we're breaking we'll, all the rules we'll, we'll here. Let, so we'll let it slide. So good. the first one <laughs> is the fundamentals. Um, if you are creating an electric car, the car has to be good. And the car has to work. If you are, uh, if you're uh, building a burrito company, your burritos have to be good. Otherwise, no one's coming back, regardless of whether the experience is awesome or not. So your fund. So check yourself on the quality, the effectiveness, the. Um, uh, your, your fundamentals, your service, your, your product, whatever you do. The next one, A, always different, positive, special. Um, this is my, uh, a sloth. Um, uh, when I was, uh, I was in the Amazon jungle in Iquitos, and uh, if you've been to, anyone been to a developing market, a uh, developing world market where there's artisan handicrafts all over, uh, kiosk after kiosk after kiosk of the same things, all at the same price. Same, same, but different. Right, right exactly, right? Yeah, <laughs> and, but not really different, right? And right. so that's what they say. And so I'm like, so I'm thinking about marketing and like what, how, how to help these people. And, and, and I look down this long row of the sea of sameness and at the very end of the aisle, I see a huge crowd of people. Like, this kiosk is bursting at the seams. And I'm like, what is going on down there? So of course I go down, and sure enough, at this kiosk, the owner had a pet sloth, <laughs> okay? No joke. And has anyone held a sloth before? They are like bony, and their hair's wiry, and they really do move slow. And so what they're doing, Everyone's taking, they're passing the sloth around and everyone's taking a picture because who doesn't want a sloth selfie, selfie, right? Everyone does. They're taking pictures with the sloth. Where do you think people are spending their money in that market? They're spending it there because they're waiting for their turn, for their sloth turn, and then afterwards they're so happy, they're in this different state of like sloth bliss. <laughs> and, um, and, and they're spending their money. This guy cares about me. He cares about creating something really cool for us. So I'm going to give him my money. So I ask you, what is your sloth factor? What do you do that's different, special, and, um, and uh, positive? So that's the A. What's your sloth factor? The C, con consistent commitment. In the nursing home business, the, the biggest complaint Generator is call lights. Not answering a call light, nurse come to help me at my bedside. We would tell our um, staff, Elizabeth and I, we would say, when we, when we met with everyone, we said, we want you to, these, we expect you to smile, maintain eye contact, call people by name, etc. And if people are like, eh, I don't want to do that, then you're like, great, please go and work for someone else preferably our competitor, because we want other people here that are living up to <laughs> higher standards. 
And so, um, so we get those people on board to, to demonstrate our consistent commitment to the type of experience that we were creating. Um, we would tell them, because we believe that it was everyone's job to answer call lights, no matter who you are. So I am not certified as a clinician to give an IV or to change anyone's briefs. I can't do those things legally. But I can answer a call light and then take it upon myself to go and find someone to do that. So um, we would tell them, we said, if you ever catch us passing a call light and not answering it, we will give you 20 bucks out of our pocket right now. And so what do you think? Everyone's watching all the time, right? And sometimes I think even the CNA fame, they may have even like been in the room and tested us, like turn on the call just to see if we would answer or not. Um, this demonstrated our consistent commitment. I'll also never forget Elizabeth, my business partner, director of nursing. She dressed so much to the nines, you'd think she was like the first lady of Guatemala. I mean, she, <laughs> and she's from Guatemala, and she's like amazing heels, like just, oh, the most amazing nurse ever. And I'll never forget, it's like, where's Elizabeth? I haven't seen her in a while. One of the nurses comes up to me. She's like, oh, she's dumpster diving. Someone uh, like forgot their dentures on the, on the lunch tray. And so Elizabeth's out there in her heels <laughs> digging through trash. Do you think that any of those nurses wouldn't walk through fire for Elizabeth? I would too. Um, consistent commitment, it starts at every level. And it's actually, it's, it is at every level, starts at the top. Consistent commitment. Mm -hmm. Last one. Oh, wow. Again, the article, I'm sorry, but oh, wow. Um, this is a picture of a, of a taco place in Mexico City. They've been around for about 53 years making tacos as long as your arm, called Los Machetes, because they look like machete uh, 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 swords. So this picture here, there's a video that goes with it, but the picture here that I took, this, is, this was something that I've shared with so many people. They, they, they were like, Sami, just you know, gushing over these tacos, and this is so amazing and awesome. Amparo, who's the owner, she's like, I don't even know, 65 years old, still there. She's like, hey, do you want to learn how to flip them? I'm like, yeah, of course. And so, um, so she invites me. That's, that, that's not me. Those aren't my hands, but those are the hands that trained me. <laughs> and so they, 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 she had me come around, and she's like teaching me how to flip these. I was a disaster. Meat was getting all over the place. And, um, and I was having the time of my life flipping these tacos. I know it's like the, the most simple thing. Um, and uh, and um, it was just this wow moment when I've never had anything like that happen before. And because it was so crazy and the taco length and the experience and they were involving me, integrating me into their brand story. I've now told this to thousands of people as well. This is the oh wow. This is the, in Mexico, they call it the pilon. This is the little bit extra. This is the cherry on top. This is the surprise and delight. And so what are you doing to surprise and delight? All right, I think we need to jump to audience questions. Um, where is AJ? He's been so excited to ask this oh question. Oh boy, <laughs> I'm scared. All right. Is this on? I'll, I'll yell loud. So Scott, um, looking for churros and knowing that Utah loves sugar, right? Yeah. Are we going to all look kind of like you if we eat a lot of your churros? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, um, I exercise to eat, um, and so I love food so much, obviously. Um, this, uh, so True Confessions, it's been... Oh, it's been now, uh, it's well over 10 years since I've had refined white sugar. Wow. Cabo. Oh, gosh. How about right there? <laughs> I think it's crazy. Oh, my gosh. I don't know. No, I think it's crazy. And um, what's that? And living in Utah. <laughs> um, so I have had our churros. Uh, uh, for the record, our dough doesn't have any sugar in it. And we do make some fillings that don't have refined white sugar in it. So, cool. yeah. Awesome. So, but yes. not, what's that? Sorry. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, audience question. Why Saint Devil? 
Oh, great question. So um, when I was coming up with the name, they were, they were talking about like trademarks and uh, a little bit earlier. So when I was coming up with the name, I it all happened very fast. We started the company in like uh, about three days. And so I was at home I, and I'd been thinking about it, but I went down this path of they're so good. They're like sent from heaven. They're divine. So St. Churro, Holy Churro, all these things. And then I was like, okay, well, that's great. And then I, was, and then I went to the flip side. It's like, yeah, but they're so bad for you, and they're so tempting, and they're so, like, wicked and evil. Like, get, get, you know, get these, churro he- these churros hence, you know, sort of thing. And, um, and I was like, and then, so I was going, like, devil, uh, Diablo, churro, all of these iterations. And then I was like, well, what if I just, like, mashed them together? And I did, like, Saint Devil which is obviously an oxymoron. And, um, and so I, I was like, hmm, trademark search. No one had claimed it. I'm like, boom, that's what we're doing. And um, so we like to say they're heaven sent wicked good is what we say. Um, and uh, and I, I was longing for a brand that had some heft to it, that brand that had character, a brand that we could do something with, with regards to experience. And so we totally embrace the angel and the devil, and we wear horns and halos, and we, um, we like, de- it's incorporated into our secret menu, which you need to find out about. We got Diablo cinnamon sugar, which is spicy cayenne cinnamon sugar on the outside, and Inferno cinnamon sugar, which is habanero powder with cinnamon sugar. So those are on our secret menu. You now know um, <laughs> all the secrets. Not all of them, but some of them. And... Uh, uh, we just like to incorporate it into everything that we do, and so I wanted something that we could play with, that we could have fun with. So, yeah, so Saint Devil, San Diablo. Oh, that is so fun. Um, well, let me ask you the last question we like to ask all of our entrepreneurs at this Featured Founder Series. What's one thing that your success in entrepreneurship has allowed you to do? Oh, I remember this question. This one was really fun to reflect on. Um, I've... Uh, Man, because um, it's it was it was fun to reflect on because I, everything from like because of the taco stuff I, we just got back from a taco tour and did got in the ring with luchadores with like we put on our stretchy pants and the mask and like we're slamming each other and they taught us all the techniques that was oh. several months ago it was amazing um, I was able to, because we were pitching uh, investors for Surf Air there were a couple of really cool things that we got to do. Um, I, I was uh, alone with Jared Leto and his assistant, pitching him to be an investor in Surf Air, wow. give him an elbow bump because he doesn't shake hands, and, um, and, uh, and got to talk with him and share and pitch him uh, wow. Surf Air. And, he, and then our CEO came, and we both were there for a bit, and, and he ultimately ended up investing. That was super fun. Um, uh, Tim Ferriss. We also pitched Tim Ferriss. Didn't end up investing in Surf Air, but uh, we went to lunch with him. And like a fan geek I was, I, uh, he had inspired my brother and I through his book, uh, The 4-Hour Workweek, which I highly recommend. Um, and we created Reverse Charades because of that book. And oh, so wow. I gave him a copy of Reverse Charades. I'm like, I'm that guy. I know you probably <laughs> get these all the time, like gifts of thank you so much. But yeah, so that was really fun. Um, but I think more than anything, it's, it's allowed flexibility, um, even with the intensity of the time commitment. Uh, entrepreneurship has allowed the flexibility to spend time with, and, and with the people that I care most about. Um, and, and that's really been, and being able to be there for people in, in really important times. And just to spend time with people in flexible times, because that's what and entrepreneurial, uh, entrepreneurial ventures allow you to do. So, Definitely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming today. Let's give Scott a hand. Thank you for having me. Oh. I also have something for everyone, too. Please, go ahead. So, um, because everyone needs, deserves churros, um, if you look under your chair, you should have my business card, so please stay in touch, as well as a scratch and win for free churros. Um, and so, uh, and then someone on your, uh, 
Someone has also a black napkin that says Felicidades on it. I don't know who. Hey, oh, right there we go. There. Okay, so yeah. he gets. He gets. I have uh, this shirt. This is not the right one for you. Um, but this you one that home. says "Live, live every day like it's Taco Tuesday." So I have one of these for you. This is just a sample. Um, and uh, and thank you so much. That was great. So excited to have you here. Thank yeah, you so thank much, you. Scott. And we have a nice gift for you. Sophie, oh, you want to wow. come and share this? We hope you'll enjoy this. Oh, and thank you. Just think that's of all, so nice. how many tacos and oh, churros man. you can fit inside That's, that's this. how I think. I'm like, yeah. no, yeah, exactly. Yes. I got it. We're so grateful thank to you. you and for everything you shared. Um, just before uh, we finish, I, I'm so grateful for what he shared. And I hope you have found something that you can take and apply. Has anyone found something you can apply in your business today? Yeah, me too. And... Um, uh, having been to Nepal and having mm. seen the Namaste mm. uh, approach, it is real. Yep. And I think whether you get it from a foreign culture in Namaste, whether it's you really believe that everyone else is a child of God and you treat them like one, whether you get it from karma or, or wherever it comes from, it completely changes not only your customer's experience, but your life experience as Absolutely. you do. So thank you yeah. for leading the way on that thank and for you. showing us how to apply it in a, bez in a business setting. Absolutely. Let's hear it for Scott. Thanks, buddy. Thanks for having me here. I, really, it was, I enjoyed it so much. Thank you. Uh, anytime. And, and I want you to notice, you see what he's wearing? <laughs> yeah? And you see what Colin's wearing? I mean, it's those little differences that just go beyond the expectation and dazzle and delight your customers. Shirt and tie. I saw this for the first time. The first time I saw Diablo, San Diablo tacos, uh, sorry, churros, was, someday, um, at someday. A, was at a street fair. Um, in sweltering heat, and his whole staff was wearing shirts and ties. So can I follow up with yeah, that? Yeah, come on. <laughs> so we were at Love Loud on, um, uh -huh. on, on, <laughs> on Saturday. Week. It was madness. I felt so bad. People were waiting in line for way, way too long. But um, someone, I was, I was like put, getting a, a churro trio ready for someone to purchase, uh -huh. and she's like, yeah, you guys... What kind of boss do you? He's talking to me. He's like, what kind of boss do you guys have that makes you wear ties like this? He's, I'm like, yeah, what a jerk. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so here, I love that. Here at Rev Road, we call that plus one. It's one of our values. Whatever your expectation is from your customers, make sure you're doing something plus one. That plus. And as long as you do that, you're going to have that delighted customer experience. Um, so today, I hope you take away with you the importance of traction as you look at having others chase you to uh, raise capital. And I hope you take away taco and plus one. Thanks, everybody. And oh, sorry, I almost forgot. I'm going to get in trouble. Yes, thank you. Uh, this is every first Thursday of the month. We do this as a community service. It's free. You can come and enjoy lunch. We have the workshop. It starts at 11. Uh, lunch followed by the feature founder interview. We'd invite all of you to come and join us for the first Thursday in September. Let's see, what are we at? That's the sixth. Um, AJ will be leading us in marketing on the workshop. And uh, it's a super treat. We're going to have the chance to meet with Sid Tetro, who is one of the co-founders of Women in Tech. She's amazing, dynamic leader, wonderful serial entrepreneur. Um, I don't know that she'll wear a, a bow tie, but she'll look fabulous too. So we invite all of you to attend that. Also on Thursday evenings, every Thursday evening, our doors are open to entrepreneurs who wish to attend Rev Up. And that's for anyone who wants to do deeper dives on in any of the workshop topics as it specifically applies to their particular business. Right, Sarah? Awesome. Uh, Seth, what did I forget? Uh huh. And, uh, yeah, that's what we're doing tonight. So that's always every Thursday from 4 to 5.30. And anyone's welcome to join us for that. Uh, all right, everybody. Oh, do I have something else? Oh, I do. I always forget this. Come on up. Thank you, Sophie. All right. You want to choose? Oh, OK. So we have uh, how many raffle items are we doing? Two. All right. Everybody get your raffle ticket out. And if your ticket ends in 9877, raise your hand and make some noise. All right, okay, let's get the man a prize. Okay, I, I don't want to be looking, so I gotta, okay.
Let's see. So this is 9848. Who's got that? 9848. No? Once? Going twice? Oh, thanks. Yeah, show me where to go. All right, next one. 9871. 9871. You got to go fast or I'm going to choose another one. Chad, is that you? You sure? Okay. Uh, 9858. All right, there we go. Excellent. Okay. Hey, everybody, we always end with Ready, Set, Rev, and Ready, Set, Rev. Have a great day.